Plant and food research is actively involved in the global research program looking at managing and controlling the kiwifruit vine pathogen PSA. The research program includes work funded by both the industry through Zespri and plant and food research itself and has a number of themes. Joel Vaness provides an overview of PSA and the areas of research underway. So I'm Joel Vanest. I'm a plant bacteriologist and I've been working on plant pathogenic bacteria for many years now, mostly for blight initially and since, uh, since 2009 I've been working on PSA in Italy and now here in New Zealand. So PSA was first uh, discovered in Japan in the early 80s and it's where it has been uh, named as soon as Syringae patova actinidiae. From there it has been found in Korea and early 90s was found in Italy. In Italy between 1992 and 2008 the economical importance of the disease was very limited. Uh, no, no significant impact on production of, of kiwi fruit in Italy. 2009 things changed dramatically they realized that in Latina, which is the region south of Rome, which is the region that produced the most kiwi fruit in Italy, which is the first producing uh, country in the world for kiwi fruits, they found they had an outbreak of a bacterial disease which were able to identify Asomna syringae actinidiae, which we call the PSA. So the research here uh, in the lab is uh, along three axes. One would be epidemiology, which is trying to understand how the, the pathogen gets in the plant, where the inoculum comes from, and, 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 and where does it overwinters. All that, of course, is for a very practical reason, so we can understand how we can control it. Control is a second axe of research. What can be spread, when to spray, uh, which concentration, if we want to cut the symptoms to remove the inoculum, where to cut, how to protect the wound, and, and, and all those, uh, all those uh, area. And the third axis is to try to understand what makes someone a syringe actinidia so virulent. In particular, we have this situation where PSA was found in Asia and in Italy from 1992 till 2008, with no major economical impact. Suddenly, why do we have this disease which is so um, economically important? Why now PSA is destroying vines? Why now PSA is destroying orchards? So we're looking, we're looking at what has changed in, in, in the bacteria. Again, it's for a very practical reason. If we understand what makes PSA so virulent, we can, we can find ways of controlling it and also ways of selecting plants of actinidia that would be resistant to the disease. So PSA was found early November in New Zealand. By that time, uh, I was working for several years with Zespri already on that very same disease in Italy. So immediately I've been asked to, uh, to assist with uh, looking at the symptoms and making sure that the, the pathogen found in New Zealand was actually PSA. We, we, we did find that and rapidly we realized that in New Zealand we had like two populations of the pathogen. One which is very similar to the population we found in Italy post-2008, which is a very virulent um, uh, strain of PSA, and another uh, um, population of PSA, which is found relatively widespread in New Zealand and is uh, much less virulent and its economic impact, as far as we can tell, is, is, is a nil. So I, I, I think perhaps the most important thing was to realize that the population of PSA in New Zealand is not homogeneous, but that there is these two populations, and we developed some tools that allow us to, to, to tell which, which strains we, we're having. And, 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 um, and rapidly we, we found that the virulent strain was limited to a relatively small area around Tipuki. Unfortunately, this area is growing almost day by day, but still to be able to, 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 uh, to, to tell where the virulent strain was, I thought was extremely important initially for, for the industry. So in epidemiology, we're looking at where the pathogen is uh, in the orchard and outside the orchard. This is extremely important because it allows us to understand why do we get, why do we get a disease. 
So far we found that PSA can be in three different locations. It can be on the top of the kiwi fruit vine as an epiphytic bacterium, not causing in any disease, simply multiplying on, on, on the leaf. If climatic conditions are favorable, then you get infection. That infection can give you a little leaf spot with no consequence, or the bacteria can get in the vascular system, in which case you can have your leader, your cane, or even your plant uh, dying very rapidly. Yeah, so managing the disease, what we're trying to do here is to protect the plant. When you talk about bacterial disease, there is no curative treatment that exists. It's not like fungal diseases for which there is heaps of products available. For control of bacterial diseases, we're mostly limited at heavy metals, and antibiotics. Also because we know the bacteria can be inside the plant, we're trying to find out where it is and in particular uh, in relation to symptoms so we can give their recommendation to people of where they need to cut the vine to make sure that whatever has been removed takes away all the disease material and what is left is, uh, is disease free and can regrow as a key fruit vine without the disease. Virulence. So there we're looking at molecular uh, markers that tells us this strain is virulent and that one is not virulent. And so those markers are useful because going in the orchard, coming back with a sample, we want to be able to rapidly tell people you've got a strain which is not virulent so therefore you don't need to worry about or you have a strain which is virulent and you absolutely need to do something and do something very rapidly. The other benefit of that research is that if we understand why PSA is virulent, we understand how it affects the, the kiwi fruit vine, we are now in a position to look into the kiwi fruit um, collection we've got here in New Zealand, which one is the most likely one to be resistant to PSA. Uh, if we look at the situation today, what we're really trying to do is to slow down the progression of the disease, and, and, and that means removing inoculum and protecting the plant. And so that is the number of sprays that, that you can put on the plant. All that is very short term, how to protect the plants that are already in, in, uh, in the orchard. The very long term would be actually to have new kiwi fruit cultivars that give fruit of the same quality or even better quality than that what we have now or different qualities and, uh, and would be resistant to PSA. In the meantime, there will be probably a number of um, uh, containment plan and uh, management plan that will, be, that will need to be put in place. We might need to change the way kiwi fruits are grown in the country. When do we do pruning? When do we do um, uh, girdling? Is girdling the most important things to do in, in knowing that PSA is in the orchard? So all those questions uh, will be answered and in the medium term will probably tell uh, the growers in New Zealand some of the management um, of kiwi fruit will have to be modified such that they'll be able to live with PSA in the country. I don't think now it is uh, reasonable to believe we'll be able to eradicate it. So we'll have to live with it and we'll have to manage the kiwi fruit in a different way such that we can produce kiwi fruit in an economical way knowing that PSA is still there.